thank you for responding. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. All right, so 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. It's a very familiar scripture to you. I want to talk to you today about how faith works. How faith works. It's not an all-inclusive um, topic uh, or sermon or whatever you want to call it today because uh, that's a big subject. But this is one portion of it. So just stay with me and uh, I pray that it will minister to you where you're at today. 1 John chapter 5, that's little John, chapter 5, verse 4 says, For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So you could loosely translate that. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Amen. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. For faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Hallelujah. So, if you want to overcome in this day and in this hour, faith is the avenue by which you'll do that. Praise the Lord. Are you with me? All right, then turn to Ephesians chapter 2. Praise his name. Ephesians chapter 2, and let's read verse 8. For by grace... Are you saved through faith? And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. All right? Ephesians 2, verse 8. By grace are you saved. Okay, God did the work. Right? Grace, God's riches at Christ's expense. It's yours, free. And the vehicle by which you tap into that grace is known as faith. All right? It says it right here. First we said, 1 John 5, 4, that this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Well, faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Your circumstances, your situation, that which you find yourself in, this age we live in. Hallelujah. And here, in verse 8 of Ephesians 2, it says, It's by grace that you're saved. By grace you are saved. Through faith. So faith is the vehicle you're able to tap into the grace. Praise the Lord. Amen. Welcome, Brother Bill. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise him. Good to see you back. So, Faith is a victory that overcomes this present age, that which you live in, all right? And faith is the vehicle by which you tap into all of God's riches Jesus Christ bought for you, grace. Are you okay with that? Are you with me? I think you already know these things, but we just have to go over it from time to time. Amen. I, I've preached on that scripture multiple times. I've read that scripture multiple times. But I still sit and meditate on that scripture for the Holy Spirit to speak to me. Because the word is alive. Hallelujah. It's not just a book. It's alive. That's right. Praise the Lord. So if you would look with me in Luke, the sixth chapter. Luke, chapter six. Thank you, Jesus. So we've established that faith is your victory. And you're saved by grace, or Jesus did it all. The one thing you're required to do is to believe, okay, which is faith. So Luke 6, beginning with verse 46, Why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Verse 47, whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I'll show you to whom he's like. He's like a man which built a house, dig deep, laid the foundation on a rock, and when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house, 
and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. Hallelujah. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation is built a house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell. How long did it take? Immediately. immediately. And the ruin of that house was great. All right, so we've said faith is the victory. Faith is the vehicle which you tap into all that God has done for you, freely done for you, I should add. And here, verse 46 said, why do we address him as Lord, but are not obedient to do that which we know to do? Amen. Verse 47 breaks down, to me, breaks down faith. 47 said, whoever comes to me, that's number one. You have to come to him. Right? Amen. Whoever hears my sayings and whoever does them. That's three things that's required in faith. Hallelujah. I'm telling talk to you today about how faith works. You got to come to the Lord. You can't do it your way. I used to sing that song, I did it my way. It was my favorite song. <laughs> Then I got saved, and I thought, yeah, that's a good song. Then I got saved, and I heard it. I said, no, that's no good anymore. Nope. I didn't do it my way. Nope. When I did it my way, I fell flat on my face. <laughs> it was awful. Nope. But see how the devil deceives you to think, <laughs> what a yeah. mess. Yeah, he will. Well, you got to come to him. You got to say, Lord, okay, I surrender. Yeah. It's your way or the highway. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> right. <laughs> what, what else can I say? <laughs> Whoever comes to him, number one, and has to hear what he's saying. Now, you can hear what he says and go the other direction. Right? Because the guy who built his house, the second guy who built his house, without laying the foundation, that's what he did. And it the, the ruin of it was great, the Bible said. In other words, there wasn't anything left. When it tore it apart, it ripped it apart. Wow. Hallelujah. So you can come in here and not act, and you'd probably be worse off than if you hadn't heard it all, honestly speaking. So you, you have to hear. You have to come to him, and then you have to listen to what the Spirit is saying. Mm -hmm. And then you have to act on it. You have to do it. You have to be a doer of the word. Sounds really simple, doesn't it? I mean, that's it's easy not. enough formula. Come, hear, and do. No, nah, no problem, Pastor. I can do that. That's till the pressure gets on. I think it's Acts 14 and 22 said that we through much tribulation enter the kingdom of God. Much tribulation. Now, tribulation is pressure. I call it mental pressure. Because here on earth, that's what we encounter. It's a battle of the mind. It's what you know what the word is saying, but you hear these voices. The voice of reasoning. It's more reasonable to look at this. And that argues, and there's a war going on. It causes pressure. Tribulation. But you're victorious, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I think faith is a, a lot to do with your attitude. Praise God. Amen. Satan wants you to have a bad attitude, a depressed attitude, mm -hmm. a down and out attitude, a woe is me attitude. Yeah. I can never do anything right attitude. You ever heard any of those voices? Yes, sir. Yeah, we all have. Hallelujah. And if you entertain them, if you hear those voices, and if they're louder than the word of God to you, you'll act on them, and you'll find yourself in trouble. You've got to come to the point where you come to the word, listen to the, what the word is saying. That doesn't mean just flippantly read it, or even flippantly quote a scripture. You've got to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. There's direction in there. There's guidance in there. 
There's victory in there. There's liberty in there. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The reason people don't do this is because they put no credibility in this word. Hello. Oh, they put more credibility in their circumstance. Right. Well, Pastor, my body is hurting. Well, Pastor, my checkbook does say zero. Yeah. I mean, let's be reasonable, Pastor. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, we walk by faith, not by what? That's right. Not by what I'm seeing, but by the Word of God. Amen. Right? Amen. So, you got to you've got to stay in an attitude of faith, of victory. Faith is the victory. Remember. Faith calls those things that be not as though they were. Hallelujah. By faith we understand how the worlds were formed. Glory to God. We have insight the world doesn't have. We have knowledge that the world system has, is looking for, but they can't find. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So your attitude is very important. Mm -hmm. There's a thing in, in, in uh, walking by faith that you need to understand, and that is you're going to have to expend some energy to resist right. the devil. That's right. Right. Yeah. Now, although grace says legally it's all yours, it is all yours legally. Faith is the vehicle that taps it. But Satan is the element that causes you not to get it. Whether it be through convincing you of unbelief or through um, reasonable persuasion that your way is better or that it, God didn't really say that like he told Adam and Eve. God didn't really say that. So what your position is, you must resist Satan's Efforts as you stand in faith before you physically see the answer, you must resist the satanic attack from every area that it comes from you, however it comes. Yep. And keep on keeping on. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Look at James chapter 2. Faith is an action. James chapter 2. Faith is an action. If you have faith, there is an action with it. It's not just saying, I believe, with no corresponding action. That's mental assent. That's what that is. In other words, that's mental agreement, but yet there's no real heartfelt faith that will cause you to step out and act on it. I'm trying to walk you through this because I don't know about you, but daily I fight battles. Yes, sir. Daily I'm confronted with these same things, and I have to deal with them just like you have to deal with them. Hallelujah. Maybe you deal with them... Uh, different events that I'm dealing with, but they're all the same basic things. These principles work in whatever you're facing. God's word cannot lie. It is the truth. Amen. It is the absolute. There is no counsel or argument against it. Hallelujah. And it is true from Genesis to Revelation. You can't cut and paste what you want or don't want out of it or in it. Right? You must rightly divide it. The scriptures tell you that. But it's all true. Genesis to Revelation. It's all God's word. It is the inspired word of God. This is not some emotional revelation I got after fasting 40 days and, you know, being real spiritual. It's a decision I made. Yeah. I made the decision. I believe the Bible. That's it. 
I choose to believe it. I don't care what my mind says. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care how difficult it would look to me to actually have that happen. I choose to believe God said this is his word, and it's his word. Hallelujah. And I'll sort out all the small details when I get up there. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. But I believe from Genesis to Revelation, it is fact. It is truth. It is 100% absolute. And there's nothing that it can take away from it. That's right. Amen? Amen? You have to make that decision. If you're going to base your life on this, you better make that decision. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm really pleased that that young lady from Sudan, and I think she's Catholic, actually, uh, Miriam, I think is her name, of which she stood up in the face of the Muslims and yes. said, they said, if you convert, mm -hmm. then we'll let you live. Otherwise, we're going to kill you. Yes. Yeah. And she's pregnant, you know. She was pregnant yeah. at that time. And she said, I'm not going to get away from Jesus. All right. I can't do it. Awesome. All right. Now, I'm telling you, that's some serious yes, faith in action. Yes, now, I, you know, I have faith in action and belief for a car payment or a mortgage payment or something like that, you know. But it's pretty minor when you're looking at the fact of somebody that has the really ability, the government has the ability to actually cut your head off. And you stand up to them and say, cut it off. I don't care. I'm a Christian. That's right. Praise God. So awesome. Now, that's real faith. Yes, That's faith in action. Yes, she could have cowered out and said, okay, I'll become a, a, a Muslim. And, and they would have let her out. Yeah. Hallelujah. She is in the United States now, as I understand it. Thank God. She would. And uh, wow. we're so thankful for that, that God delivered her. There are many others that are not delivered, that are not so public, that are happening daily. So... Uh, they are truly uh, uh, deserving of the Faith Hall of Fame, in my opinion. Yes. All right, uh, James chapter 2, uh -huh. verse 14. What does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he has faith but doesn't have works? Can faith save him? Okay? Well, it's grace that saved us. And faith taps into that grace right. to receive it, right? right? Therefore, it's got to be an action. Yes. Listen to what I'm saying. Grace did it. It's done. It's finished. It's over. And faith lays hold of it. Faith is an action. Hallelujah. If you don't have that action, you really don't have Bible faith. Right. You're deceived. You think you believe, but you really don't. Now, we talked for years on believing because it, it's a huge deception out there. People think they believe, but when it boils down to it, they don't. Now, don't fall into condemnation about this if you say, oh, that's me. Well, it's all of us. Not one are exempt. We all deal with these things. The, the key is that we all... Keep pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus without getting discouraged, without getting depressed, without giving up, without fainting. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Praise you. Praise you keep on keeping on. God's word does not lie. He keeps on giving. Yeah. That's what he said. Yes, he does. Praise God. <laughs> yeah. All right. Verse 15. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding, you give them not those things which are needful to the body. What does it profit? He's just giving an earthly example. Mm -hmm. Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. What one I don't I can't find the translation, but one translation translates it corresponding actions. It may even be a paraphrase. But I like that. Faith without corresponding actions. That's the works. It's not works that earn you anything, but yet when you believe something strong enough, there's an action in that belief. Now, this happens in your life, in all areas of your life. When you believe something, then there's an action that follows that real belief, good or bad. What you have to train to do in this 
living by faith, walk of faith, what you have to train to do is to you leave the word of God more than all the distractions that are trying to cause you to go another way. That's right. You see, you're a, a Navy SEAL in God's army. Amen. You're in training. Yes, sir. Combat training. You're an Army Ranger. Yes, we are. You're, you're the elite troops. Amen. Praise God. Because there is danger all around you, that's for sure. We do not deny danger. We do not deny sickness and disease. We do not deny poverty, lack, want. We do not deny them that they're out there. They are out there. We deny them the right to us. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Praise God. And the only way we can do that is faith in action based upon the grace of God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Verse 18, yeah, a man may say, thou hast faith, I have works. Show me your faith without your works. And I'll show you my faith by my works. That's right. You believe that there's one God, you do well. The devils also believe and tremble. Yes. But wilt thou know, O vain man? Mm -hmm. Vain because you're trusting more in yourself or the things than the word of God. That's vain. Yes, that faith without works is dead. Faith without a corresponding action is dead. Now I'm sharing this with you so you can check yourself. This week you're going to have opportunity. There's going to be confrontations. There's going to be mental pressure. There's going to be things that tell you, but did God really mean that for you? Is that really what God said? Are you sure that's the right interpretation of that? I mean, you're going to hear these things come at you, and you're going to have to know that you know that you know. Enough to base your life on it without fear. Yeah. By an action upon what you know to be the word of That's God. Right. Even though all hell is breaking loose against you to say, it ain't working, it ain't working. Mm -hmm. Hello, wake up, it ain't working. Yes, he is. <laughs> That's what he said to you, you know? Yes, he did. That's what your mind said. They team together. Yeah, it's an assault. Verse 21, was not Abraham our father justified by works? Let's give an example here. When he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar... See that, seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect or complete? Glory to God. And the scripture was fulfilled, which said, Abraham believed God. It was imputed unto him for being right. Well, think about the circumstance there. He took his only son, the promised son, and he took him out. He was going to sacrifice him. That means kill him. Well, that's pretty uh, against reason. That's pretty much against any kind of natural ideas and thoughts you would have. But he did it. And he told him, he said, God will provide. Jehovah Jireh, God will provide. Hallelujah. And he did. There was a ram in the bush, right? Verse 23, and scripture was fulfilled which said, Abraham believed God. It was imputed to him for righteousness, being right. And he was called the friend of God. You see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. What if Abraham had said, I, I believe you, God. I, I know you can do it. But what are you going to do out there, Lord? What if I get him out there and I don't really want to hurt him? I mean, what if he had have said all those things and then never followed through with doing it up to that point of having him there and where the ram appeared? And he would have been in mental sin. That's where a lot of uh, we find ourselves in that position. We agree with him and we're saying, wait, no, how are you going to do it? Show me how you're going to do it. You know, used to, I would, uh, I would have faith once I could feel like that I saw what God was going to make the way, you know. If, if, if it was money or whatever. I, I could believe 
that was going to happen once I could mentally draw it out and see how God could possibly do it. But then one time, it didn't happen that way, and I got all frustrated and, you know, couldn't understand, why, why did you do this to me, God? Why did you leave me? This was years ago. God didn't do it to me, but what he did do was jump out of that silly box I had him in. All right. All right. Hallelujah. Because he said to me, he actually said to me after, after I calmed down, he actually said to me, he said, think about it. Where is your faith? Your faith was in what your pictures, your imagination had drawn out of how it was going to work. It wasn't in the Word of God, just the unadulterated, unabridged Word of God. I had to repent. I said, you're right again. <laughs> Praise God. That's good. And I repented. And I learned... It doesn't matter if I can see how he's going to do it or not. What it does matter is if I can find it in the Word of God. That's, right. That's all I need. Yeah. Oh. But the battle rages fierce. Don't you think yes, it, it does? does. Oh, yeah. It rages fierce. And it may start off a month or two before the actual event's going to happen. And you're in pretty good spirits, you know. Praise God. Hallelujah. I know God has done it. And then it climbs down to about the week beforehand. Uh -oh. And you're going, I got it, Lord, I got it. <laughs> Bless God. <laughs> then it's three days beforehand. <laughs> yes, Lord. <laughs> I know it's there. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a, something to wipe the sweat. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> And the night before, I can't even sleep. Oh, I know it's there, Lord. Oh, Lord. You ever been there? Yes. The pressure builds and builds and builds. Glory to God. You got to stay in faith. Hallelujah. Well, I've run out of time here. Let me see if I can convince the rest of this. Faith is an action. In James we read, James 1.22, Be you doers of the word, not hearers only, or you deceive yourself. Yes, Do you hear what James is saying? If you're just a hearer and not a doer, it's self-deception. It's not even the devil deceiving you. It's self-deception. Okay. <laughs> and that's a really, really crucial understanding. Because what you do is you literally talk yourself out of the Word of God and into whatever your reasonable excuse is. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's an exciting life. This is not a life for a lazy person. No, sir. You can't make it being lazy. You can't make it if you are uh, uh, timid and you just... Uh, laid back and you don't really care what happens. It's not that you're going to, God will have to change you because you won't make this faith walk that way. You've got to have the action, an aggression, a resistance, a firmness, standing upon the rock when the waves, the wind, the storm beats vehemently against you. Yes. You may sway a little bit with it, but you don't move. Yes. Hallelujah. That's right. You're founded upon the rock. That's it. Glory. That's it. Glory to God. Praise Hallelujah. God. Praise you know, when, when they asked Jesus, they said, Jesus, your mother and your brothers are outside. You know, they pay attention to your mother and brothers. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't say, okay, stop. Hold on. Wait. I got to go see what mom wants. Mm -hmm. Right? He said, here's my mother and brother, the ones who hear and do yes, the, the word of God. God. Yes. Wow. That's powerful stuff. Yes. That's, awesome powerful. That's powerful stuff. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. Let me just give you a couple examples and I'm going to close. I might want to read one more scripture. Bear with me.
this is applicable in all these things, but in many more, okay? This is just a few that your, your very salvation is dependent upon your faith and action. That's found in Romans 10, 9, and 10. If you believe in your heart, it was raised from the dead, yes. then you confess him as Lord. That's right. Right? Victor over everything. That's right. Anything that causes death, he's Lord over it. Right? Amen. So, but if you don't confess it, but you just think to yourself, I believe it, you haven't completed that step of salvation. And immediately, when those vehement waves and wind come along, they can knock you over. Out to sea. Yeah. Glory to God. How about tongues? Well, Mark 16 and 17 says these signs will follow a believer. It doesn't say that a believer will follow this sign. It says these signs follow the believer. And one of them is tongues. Right. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Glory to God. So that is a faith in action. You understand, saints. That is a great picture of being able to see and experience your faith in action on earth when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speak in an unknown tongue. Because right. right. it's not you speaking. Sure you know, whenever I thinking about something, if I start talking, it stops what I'm thinking. Oh, yeah. But if I'm praying in tongues on the way to work, say, in the morning, my mind can think on several things. When I'm praying out loud in tongues, why? Because my spirit is praying, not my mind. Right. My mind forms the English words. I'm thinking what I say and I'm talking. But when, the, when I pray in the spirit, it's coming from my spirit, the Holy Spirit in my spirit. Enabling me to talk in that heavenly language. Now I'm telling you, that's tapping heaven on earth yes. in such a manner that every Christian should go after it. Oh yes, sir. And use it. And Pentecostals were famous for getting it and then just leaving it alone. Yeah. They'd have it one time with a real emotional experience. <laughs> <laughs> then that's it. <laughs> Hey, there's nothing wrong with that, you know. I mean, I'm kind of kidding about it, but there's nothing wrong with it. I like to see people have emotional experience. I like to see them having any experience with God, as long yes. as it's from the Lord, you know, not out of the flesh. You know. But the problem with that was they had that experience. That's where all their faith was. Boom, they never did it again. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Well, they've gotten liberated a lot with this current day movement, and a lot of them now do use it. That is given to you for your spiritual warfare. Yes, it is. To pray daily. Yes, it is. We talked about tithes this morning. That's a great way to yes. exercise your faith. He said, prove me now. Yes. Here we are. So, or does your does your mind explain it away? Well, you know, Lord, I've got to pay the power bill, and i got to pay the mortgage, and uh, I need to eat too, so I better not give all my tithes. Uh -oh. I'll give 5% this week. No. Or how about I'll just tip you this week. I'll give you a dollar. And I'll take care of you next week. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's, a lot, that's why we don't pass the plate. That's why a lot of people, they feel yeah. obligated to just tip God. Let me throw him in a quarter of a dollar. <laughs> Keep your dollar. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Obey God. That's right. Glory to God. Amen. Right. Amen. Oh, Hallelujah. Jesus. We're not money hungry here. You understand that? Amen. We had people try to give us money. We'd give it back. If it's not the right spirit involved, we give it back. I and Pastor James, Pastor Flo, we are not money-hungry people. We have more than enough. Hallelujah. But we want it done the right way where you'll get a blessing from it. That's right. Well, what about church attendance? Hebrews 10.25, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. But now in today's society, we just become so... Non-committed, so complacent. And I'm just go to church when I can. I make it every once in a while. What's wrong with that, Pastor? Everything. I come once every six months. Is that good enough? Well, we miss you when you're not here. By the way, yeah. We love you. We need to see your smiling face out there because you're part of our family. Yeah. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Besides all that, God says, "Don't forsake it." That's right. 
Now, no matter what I say or Pastor James says, God says, That's right. That's you it. should go. That's it. That's final. Hallelujah. Thank you. Lord. Well, you can exercise your faith or you can explain it away. It's up to you. Yeah. How about your conversation? Well, your conversation needs to change when you get saved. I could use, used to, I could out cuss any of them. My Janet Walker can tell you. It's embarrassing. I mean, I had a foul mouth oh, no. until I got saved. Amen. God changed that. Yes. Amen. But it didn't just stop at taking away my cuss words. Now I had to exercise my faith to say what God says instead of saying what I'm seeing and feeling. Amen. That's vital. Yes, You're only partway there when you stop the cussing. Yes. You got to replace it with the Word of God. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Now you got to understand that real faith. Now listen to me, please. Don't misunderstand me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna close. This is my second close. <laughs> you got to understand that real faith is not saying it to get it. But it's saying it because you know you have it. That's right. Oh, I like that. now that's important. That's awesome. right. There's a lot of us out there that's saying things that we really don't believe yet. And that doesn't work. Now, let me balance this. There is a place in faith that you speak to the mountain and it has to move. Okay? That's another side of it. We'll talk about that side another time if you decide to show up. <laughs> Hallelujah. But today you're getting this half of it. Okay? And this half, this is very important. For reality in a faith walk, that means I believe grace so much that it just comes out of my mouth without having to work it up. Glory to God. I'm in faith then. Okay? That's right, that's right. Well, it's a place we all have to aspire to. Yes. I'm talking, you may be in that place in your salvation, but you may be a shipwreck in health and finances and other things. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. You may be that place in your divine health and you wonder why anybody could possibly get sick because you are just a tower of faith in hell. Okay. But your finances are a wreck and they're after you and they're taking your house, your car, and everything else. You understand this has to be exercised in every area. Yes. You can't just get lazy in one area because you think you have got hold of something in one area and then lay everything else down. Oh, okay. There goes another strike from the devil. <laughs> you, you can't be lazy in this. No. Hallelujah. Okay, I guess I'm going to close. First Timothy, last scripture, only last scripture. We might talk more in another week. I don't know. Praise talk to God, Dad, he'll tell you. God, First God. Timothy. Yes, you will. That is in the New Testament. Chapter 4, verse 16 says, Take heed unto yourself. It means gird up your loins. Straighten up. And unto the doctrine, the, the, the word of faith. Continue in them. Continue in them. Continue. Don't give up. Don't tuck tail and run. Don't faint. Yeah. And sometimes I've had it. Where my knees felt so weak, it felt like literally I was going to go down. Yes, sir. I have had it where I've had uh, a headache, mm -hmm. pacing the floor in the middle of the night, and I'm thinking my head is going to explode. I've got sweat coming off of me. I'm nauseated from it. It hurts. It's not pleasant. But it's a point of whether or not does the word work or does it not. Well, Satan does everything he can to stop it yes. and make it look like it doesn't right. and then explain it with a reasonable explanations, back it up with books that you can find on the shelf about how God doesn't do these things anymore. That's the truth. Glory to God. Take heed to yourself and to this doctrine. Continue. 
For in doing this, in the continuance of it, you'll save yourself and all those that are hearing you and watching you and seeing you. Yeah. And they say, what's different about you? Yeah, right. I'm a Christian too. I was a Christian for years and didn't know these things, and I was beat up, bloody, bruised, and about to just give up. But then God was gentle enough, and he showed me yeah. little at a time. These things work. Yes, they do. They're for your benefit. They're for your exhortation. They're for your strength. Thank you, Lord. It's not just, I'm not just up here bumping my gums this morning. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm here to share with you deliverance, victory, freedom, heaven on earth. Yeah. You can have it. It's yours. You just got to take it. But you got to take it the Bible way. You can't just do it your way. You got to take it God's way. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let's stand up. Praise, Praise God. God. I went a little over this morning. I'm sorry. But I have to say what the Lord gives me. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands toward heaven. We bless you.